Now when you're printing from Photoshop, you're going to have two different print dialogues to go through. The first one's the Photoshop print dialog, and the next one is your printer driver. So let's take a look at the process. Once you've got your image ready to print, we'll go under File, Print, and the Photoshop dialog will pop up. This is where you choose whether you want it to print in portrait mode or landscape. My image is a landscape, so I'll leave it set there. Next is how it's going to deal with color. You can tell Photoshop to deal with the color. If you're going to use a custom ICC profile, maybe you've got one for a special paper you're using. The easiest way is to use the printer manages colors. And this is where it'll allow the Epson driver to deal with the color information, how it's going to print out the colors. Next, we've got the rendering intent. Um, perceptual or relative. Relative is the default, so I'm going to leave it into there. Unless you have a specific reason to change it, we'll just leave it at relative color metric and then where it's going to print on the page. Defaults to the center, and it defaults to 100% size. If you have a reason for making it larger or smaller, maybe you just want to make it print as large as it can on the page, you can use the scale to fit media option, or you can type in a different value in here. The bottom ones, don't worry about it. That's more if you're doing proofing or making plates for the press or something like that. Um, so printing marks, functions, postscript options, don't worry about any of that. Once you have your settings in here chosen, we'll go to the print settings button. And this calls up your printer specific dialog. In this case, it's the Epson driver. And in this example, I'm going to be using the Epson Stylus Pro 3880. Now you can see that this printer here is not online because I'm not actually connected to it, but I'm just showing you all the settings. Um, once you have your settings chosen, you can save it as a preset. We'll take a look at that at the end. The paper size options here is where you're going to tell it what size paper you're using. In the case of the 3880, it's actually got three feed paths. There's the rear feeder, the front feeder, and the auto feeder. Usually you just use the auto feeder, it can handle most types of paper and it'll actually pull the paper in on its own. For each of these you need to put the paper in and get it ready to print manually. So US letter is the option here. If you're printing borderless, if you want to make an image that goes all the way to the edges of the page, there's two ways of doing it. There's the auto expand option where you tell it you send it an 8.5 by 11 inch document if you're going to letter size paper and it will actually expand the image. It will make it a little bit larger than 8.5 by 11 and it'll overspray the paper uh, just to make sure that if the paper didn't load quite straight it doesn't get a little bit of a white fringe along the outside there. So if there's a, something on your page that you, has to be a specific size this will actually make it print a little bit larger, about 3% larger than you had intended. The other option is the retain size where it'll keep the size, but you have to make the print, the image, a little bit larger than the paper you're using. So you would make your print, say, you know, 8.6 by 11.1. Uh, it'll print at the exact same size, a little bit larger, and that overspray will go outside the pages just to make sure you don't get fringes along there. If you send exactly 8.5 by 11 and use the retained size, it'll try to print it borderless, but again, if that paper didn't load quite straight, you'll get a little bit of a white fringe around the outside. So I'm just going to leave it at US letter. Uh, where you can see it has a 3.18 millimeter border all the way around the outside. That's the unprintable area when you're not using full bleed. So I'll leave it there. Under the layout menu, the little pop-up there, you'll find color matching, paper handling, cover page. Most of these we don't need to worry about. Color matching is where you can also set an ICC profile if you want to use a custom setting. But again, the Epson color controls give you the option to change the, the way the printer is handling color. If you find that your prints are coming out slightly too magenta, you can use the color controls to dial that down. So I usually leave this here so I've got more options to change colors within the driver itself as opposed to having to go back to my image in Photoshop and make changes on an image by image basis. If you can change the way the driver outputs the color, you should be able to get a more accurate match on a consistent basis. Now the printer settings, again, under the pop-up from here, we've got basic and advanced color settings. Let's start with the basic tab. Uh, by default, it tells you here we're going to the sheet feeder. If I'd chosen a different one, uh, it would say what it is here, and it might give me some other options down here. The media type is where you choose what sort of paper you're printing on. If you've got glossy, semi-gloss, lusters, you can choose them under the photo paper pop-up. If you've got matte papers, You'll find the settings in here. If you're using an Epson paper, you'll find that these names match what's on the box. If you're using a third-party paper, you'll just try to find the name that most closely matches the sort of paper you're using. So if you're using an ink press luster, you probably go to the ultra premium photo paper luster setting up here. And different printer drivers will have different options around here. Just find one that sounds similar and give it a try. There's a certain amount of trial and error involved in printing. Uh, there's also a plain paper option if you're using just plain office paper, but uh, for something like a 3880, that's kind of a waste. 
Down here, we've got the print mode option. This is where you can choose your color settings. Um, usually if you're doing a color image, AccuPhoto HD2. If you're doing a black and white image, this option will give you some more options in terms of giving it a warmer tone or a cooler tone or kind of playing around with the contrast, things like that. But for color images, we'll just leave it at AccuPhoto HD2. And if your image has 16-bit data in it, clicking this will in theory give you slightly smoother tones, probably not all that noticeable. Uh, the image I'm printing is just uh, from an iPhone, so it doesn't have 8 bits. So I'll, or it doesn't have 16. I'll just turn that off. And if you have Adobe RGB as your color space, you'll set it here. Uh, again, because this is from an iPhone, it's sRGB, so I'll leave that setting. Um, this will get you a slightly larger gamut, but in the case of this image, it won't matter because it's from an iPhone. But if you've shot RAW and you've processed it out to Adobe RGB, you'll get some better information from there. The resolution is chosen down here. Because of the luster settings, I've got only the two highest end options, 1440 and 2880. Whether or not you'll notice a difference between the two depends on how close you get to it and whether you know how to use a magnifying glass. Um, there's pretty much no difference between the two. This one will take a bit longer and use a little bit more ink. This one will come out a bit faster. If I had a matte paper selected, I might find that the fine option is available. And if I was using plain office paper, I'd probably see that the draft options were available as well. So I'll leave it set at 1440 there. The high speed option will print faster because it'll print in both the left and right motions of the print head. But if there's any misalignment between the left and right directions, you'll find there's a bit of a grittiness or granularity to your image. So out of paranoia, I usually leave that turned off. Uh, if you're in a bit of a hurry, you can turn it on. It's up to you. The flip horizontal, if you're printing onto a backlit media, maybe a transparency or something, uh, and it's going to go into a light box with the light shining through it, this will basically just print a mirror image of your print. So for most reasons, you wouldn't want to do that. The finest detail option won't make any difference unless you have vector information, so type or some vector shapes or something. If it's just a photograph and it's just pixels, there's no point turning this on because it won't make any difference. The advanced settings on this tab here. We can adjust the gamma, which is the overall brightness of the image. Um, the lower gamma will get you a slightly brighter image. The higher will get you a slightly darker image. You can also adjust the brightness with the brightness slider here. You can adjust the contrast, the saturation. Uh, if you find that, say, it's printing too magenta, you can reduce the amount of magenta in the print. So you got sort of some color control options down here. The next one, page layout settings. If you're using the borderless option, say I was doing the borderless auto expand, this becomes active. If you're printing full bleed with the auto expand, it makes the image a little bit larger and you can see that it oversprays around the outside of the paper. There's sponges inside the printer that'll pick up the overspray. You can set the amount of enlargement down. I usually put it around minimum and I haven't had a whole lot of problems with it. Um, it does the minimum amount of enlargement, the minimum amount of overspray, which means that your image is closer to the actual size it was set in Photoshop. So if you have something that has to be a very specific size, say you're doing a jewel case or something and it has to fit into the CD case there, um, instead of the borders option, you would want the retain size and that will keep it the exact same size, but you will have to make that slightly larger document. The advanced media control, you really shouldn't need to go into too often. This is the overall amount of ink that it's going to put down. If you find that maybe the paper you're using isn't as absorbent as some of the others and the ink is kind of puddling on the surface, you can increase the drying time per print head pass and this will change this. The, uh, it'll give it a little bit of a pause after each move back and forth. So um, it'll really slow down your printing. So you probably don't want to use that unless you're having problems with the ink not getting absorbed quick enough. Paper feed adjustment, if you find that you're getting some, some slight, slight white banding, uh, you can decrease the amount of feed. Just be aware if you use this, some things might come out a little bit squished. Let's say you're printing a circle, it might come out as kind of a, a flattened oval or a slightly elongated oval um, if you increase the paper feed adjustment. The paper thickness, if you know a specific thickness, you can set it here. Usually your settings on the printer settings will decide what the thickness is going to be in the basics here. So you shouldn't really need to adjust that. But if you find that you're getting head strikes, which is where you get a little uh, kind of a black horizontal scuff mark on your print where the print head actually kind of scuffed against the paper, you can increase the platen gap over here, which is the distance between the paper and the print head itself. If you set it to wider, the print head will lift a little bit higher. The downside to using a wider platen gap is the ink has to get shot across a larger uh, gap and there's more chance of getting not quite as precise placement. The narrower the gap, the closer the print head is to the paper and the more precise the placement is. So if you're finding you're getting head strikes, you can go to platen gap, make it a little bit wider, but for the most part, just leave it at auto and it'll decide based on your paper settings where it should be. Once you have all of your settings here looking good, under the presets, you can go to the save current settings as preset 
and call this, I'll call this uh, preset one. And there's two options here, only this printer and all printers. If you have a bunch of printers at home, maybe you got some laser printers, a couple different inkjets, by choosing only this printer, when you're connected to, in this case, the 3880, you'll see this preset option. If you're telling it to print to a different printer, you won't see this preset. If you're printing at the print lab at Seneca, you'll want to set it to all printers if you're printing from your own laptop, because each of those separate 3880s is treated as a different printer. So if you connect to the printer over on the right side of the room, and then the next day you connect to the one on the left, if you set to only this printer, the other printer won't see this driver setting. So set it to all printers if you're in the print lab there. Hit OK. That accepts that, keeps it as a preset. Then you hit Save in the Epson dialog. That takes you back to the Photoshop dialog. And then hit Print over here. And out it goes.